In this lesson, we're going to talk about one-step inequalities. And then in the next lesson, we'll build up and we'll work ourselves into two-step inequalities. If you remember from the last unit, we studied equations and how to solve one-step and two-step equations. The great thing about inequalities is we're going to use the same exact process to solve an inequality. So let's look at the first one. And just like we did in equations, I'm going to start, start by putting a box around the variable. That's the variable that I'm looking for. I'm going to locate my inequality symbol and draw a little line going down. That divides my inequality into two separate sides. So my goal is to get x by itself. So I need to eliminate any of the numbers um, that's I like to use the term bothering the x. So in our case, positive 6 is bothering our x, so I'm going to use its opposite operation, just like in equations, and I'm going to subtract 6. So when I subtract 6 from one side, I also have to subtract 6 from the other side. And then I draw my equal sign. All right, just like in equation, I'm going to carry down my x, and my positive 6 minus 6 are my additive inverses, so they are going to cancel out. I'm going to bring down my inequality symbol, and then I'm going to do my subtraction. 4 minus 6 is going to give me negative 2. And there you have it. Just like in an equation, you have your answer. x is less than or equal to negative 2. And just as a reminder, um, unlike an equation that only has one answer, an inequality has multiple answers. So the answers to this inequality are going to be all of the numbers that are less than or equal to negative 2. Let's go see what that looks like on a number line. I'm going to start by um, putting my zero in the center of my number line, and then I'm going to use the number that's actually in my inequality, and I'm going to plot that. And then I'm going to take that number's opposite, and I'm going to plot that. X is less than or equal to negative 2, so it looks like I have a filled in circle on negative 2, and I know that by my symbol less than or equal to. And the direction of my symbol, it looks like it's facing the left direction, or the arrow is going to the left, so my arrow and my inequality will also go to the left. Okay, now I want to figure out, well, which solutions are actually less than or equal to negative 2. 7 is not, 0 is not, 10 is not, 9 is not, negative 8 is, and negative 4 is as well. All right, let's solve another one-step inequality. I'm going to start by putting a box around my variable and drawing my line down my page. And you can see here that just like in an equation, you can have a variable on the right-hand side of the inequality. It's perfectly fine. You'll see what we'll do um, at the end. All right, I need to eliminate the 5. And the 5 is a positive 5 because it doesn't have a negative symbol in front of it. So I have to do my opposite operation from positive 5, which is negative 5. So I'm going to subtract 5. 7 minus 5 is going to give me a 2. I'm going to bring down my inequality symbol. My additive inverses cancel out, and I'm left with a positive x. So I'm just going to write positive x. So you can see that my inequality is backwards. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to draw my little arrow down here. I'm going to rewrite it with the x on the left-hand side. The, the, um, the variable always has to be on the left-hand side, but I always wait till the end to um, transfer it. So my x is on the left. Notice how back in my inequality here, I have um, the, the, the big side of the inequality, you can see that I'm putting little teeth on it, is facing the x. So whenever I um, write it the other direction, you can see that the, the large side of the inequality is still facing the x. And my answer is x is greater than or equal to 2. So let's go ahead and graph it. Start with my 0. I'm going to place my number on the line that's in my inequality, and then it's opposite. And I have x is greater than or equal to. That means I have a closed circle on 2, and my, um, my, my inequality is facing the right direction. So I'm looking for numbers that are bigger than 2 or equal to it. So 3 is um, greater than it. Negative 5 is not. Negative 7 is not. 2, well, 2 is the solution because it is equal to 2. 9, and that is it. Okay, let's look at some more. All right. Now that we've kind of got the gist of this and probably recognize, um, you know, and remember how to do this from equations, I, there is a very special rule that is um, involved when you're solving inequalities. And here's the rule. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign of the inequality. 
Let me show you what I mean. In this first example, I'm going to treat it just like the other problems, and I'm going to put a box around my variable, and I'm going to draw my line down my page. I ask myself, who's bothering the negative 3? I'm sorry, who's bothering the x? And we say, oh, negative 3. So I need to eliminate it. Right now, the operation is multiplication, so I'm going to divide both sides of my inequality by negative 3. In that moment, you just satisfied the rule that we talked about above. We multiplied or divided by a negative number. You can see that my negative number is negative 3. I'm going to put that in red. I divided by a negative number. What that does is it takes my sign and I actually have to flip it over. Let me show you what I mean. Right now, my symbol is greater than or equal to. I'm going to change it to a less than or equal to. Then I'm going to simply finish the problem. My negative 3's cancel out. I'm left with x, and 12 divided by negative 3 is going to be negative 4. So my answer to this inequality is x is less than or equal to negative 4. If you forget to flip the sign, then you won't graph it correctly and you won't get the right solutions correct. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph it. 0, negative 4, and 4, just like normal. Less than or equal to will give me a closed circle on my negative 4. And it's moving in the left direction. Negative 4 is the solution. And that's it. Let's do another one of those. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and start by putting a box around my variable and drawing my line. All right. To eliminate the negative 5, I must multiply by negative 5. Let's remember our rule. If we multiply or divide by a negative number, which we did here, we have to flip that sign. So in the moment, when you recognize it, go ahead and flip your sign. And then go ahead and simply solve. My negative 5's cancel out, and I'm left with x is greater than negative 10. So x is greater than negative 10 is my solution to my inequality. So all the answers that are greater than negative 10 are going to be my solutions. I'm going to go ahead and graph him. I have an open circle on negative 10, and I'm moving in the right direction. If you forgot to flip your sign, that means your arrow is going to be facing the wrong direction. So be very careful to flip that sign if necessary. All right, negative 9 is a solution. Negative 5, negative 10 is not. 0 and 9 are solutions to my inequality. OK, let's look at some more trickier ones. We're still working with one-step inequalities, and um, for this one, it's a little bit tricky. Let's go ahead and solve it. Just like before, I'm going to put a box around my variable, and I'm going to draw my line, and I'm trying to get rid of the 6. Notice that the 6 is a positive 6. So when I divide both sides, I'm going to divide both sides by a positive 6. Now, ask yourself, did I divide by a negative number? And the answer is no. That 6 that we divided by is positive. So therefore, we are not flipping our sign. All right, let's go ahead and solve. x is less than or equal to. Negative 24 divided by 6 gives me a negative 4. Just because my answer is a negative number does not mean that I need to flip my sign. I only flip my sign whenever I multiply or divide by a negative number. So x is less than negative 4. I'm sorry, less than or equal to negative 4 is my inequality. And when I graph it, it looks like this less than or equal to negative 4, so that's a closed circle on negative 4, and it's going to be moving to the left. Negative 4 is a solution, and it looks like that's it. Okay, let's do another one just like that. Put a box around my variable, draw my line. I'm going to multiply both sides by positive 4. Notice how I'm not multiplying by a negative number, so I'm not going to flip my sign. I'm just simply going to solve it x is greater than negative 20. Again, I have an instance where my answer is a negative. It doesn't matter. The rule applies to only that number that I'm dividing or multiplying by. So if I graph it, I'm going to go ahead and put my 0, negative 20, and 20 up there. I have an open circle on negative 20, and I'm moving to the right. So it looks like I have a lot of solutions here. I think everything is actually going to be a solution. 
Okay, so the big thing to know here is um, that rule that we talked about. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip that sign. Um, I'm going to go back up to the other slide for a second, and I'm going to give you a little suggestion. As you, um, you recognize when you're going to flip, uh, it's usually going to be when that number that is sitting right out front. Here, let me change my pen color. That number that's sitting right out front is a negative number. So when you say that that negative 3 right there, um, you want to get rid of him. That means you have a negative number. You have to multiply or divide by a negative number. I would actually write the word flip. That might be a great way to just help you remember that you have to flip that sign. Same thing down here. When you multiply by that negative 5, um, because that number is a negative number, you have to flip. So I would actually write myself a little note and say, don't forget to flip. Okay, so that is the end of the lesson on one-step inequalities.